I don't think that it would be right or fair of them to think in that way. And I think when they, well, they see are. what we have uh, been thinking about, what we're really thinking about is a reasonable evolution of the protocol, very much within the spirit of the protocol to preserve peace in Northern Ireland and stability in Northern Ireland and solve the problems that the vast majority of people in Northern Ireland agree there are with the protocol and they support uh, reform of it. That's the thing that we just have no option at this point but to do, given that the EU hasn't been willing to talk about ways that it can evolve, as had been foreshadowed by the agreement itself. When this all first kicked off, and I remember being in the European mm. Parliament immediately after the Brexit vote and then through all the years of agony and negotiation, and it was, I mean, thank goodness we're past that yes, bit. Thank goodness. Although we've got yes. this to deal with. True. But it was interesting because we were told by the bosses of the EU the, at the time, the Junkers and then the von der Leyen's, that the protocol was necessary to preserve the integrity of the Good Friday Agreement, the Belfast Agreement, the Peace Agreement that we came to in 1998. Now it seems there's a different argument being put. It now seems the unionist community are arguing that actually the protocol is threatening the Good Friday Agreement on the basis that consent mm -hmm. has not fully been given and that we might start to begin to even consider returning to the bad old days. How do you see the settlement of the Good Friday Agreement in relation to the protocol? Well, we certainly don't want to return to the bad old days. <clears throat> and um, one thing that maybe had been forgotten by some in the EU was the integral part of the Belfast Agreement, which was the east-west strand of it. And that's obviously a thing that unionists take very seriously. Yeah. But ev everybody in Northern Ireland who thinks about it should and does take it seriously. And that is really what we're trying to think about ways of preserving. How do we take a reasonable approach to giving the EU maximum assurance about the integrity of their single market while at the same time allowing yeah, goods I mean, that are destined I mean, to remain as, in Northern Ireland as if we're to come through a green channel? Are we yeah. sort of potential smugglers or of, of substandard goods? Or it, it isn't, no. Is the government going to act? Well, I very much hope it will, and I believe it will. Um, it's essential that we get this, this green channel. It doesn't mean the EU get no information about what's in the green channel. There's a, a mass of commercial data mm. uh, that particularly the big supermarkets and the big traders have put in place through a new system that they set up a year and a half ago. And that is what we can provide to the EU to really give them very, very great degree well, of knowledge as to what is passing into that, that territory.